name's Jeannie Hardy. I worked for County Durham and Darlington Foundation Trust uh, when we introduced um, various pilot studies of using digital technology. My role was as project manager for overall development of digital products. So the INR um, project was one of two main projects that we worked on and that was very successful. So we, um, we obviously had to train the patients. There was a lot of scepticism with, with the clinicians at the time uh, about whether who, who could safely test, could patients do it, uh, how would it work. Um, but we worked together and we um, initially started with a pilot of 100 patients. These were chosen by the clinic staff um, people who were um, fairly stable um, on warfarin, um, yeah, people who we thought could manage to um, learn how to self-test. But I think really important to listen to what the concerns are and address those as they come along. And also, um, feedback was really important. So with patients, we just emphasise, look, if there's any problems at all, feedback, tell us what they are. We need to know because this, this was a brand new service and um, feedback was really important so we could address any issues as they came along. So we had a nurse trainer come from Roche who would train the patients in using the Quaggy Check and it was two sessions so they trained in a group of people first of all and um, took about an hour to an hour and a half um, and they performed their own self-test and then they were given the machine to take away and practice for usually about a week and then they came back and had a one-to-one -one session um, to check through had they been able to do it successfully, had they had any problems Sometimes people struggled with little parts of it and just needed a little bit of extra tuition. Um, but usually at the second um, session, we signed them off as competent. Occasionally, if people struggled, we might bring them back again, give them a little bit longer to practice, or just give them a bit more direction. Um, but generally, people are signed off on the second session. Um, and then after that, we register on the system and we ask them to monitor weekly um, for a month. So they're practicing, getting their skills of self-testing, making sure that we get accurate results and also using, um, they were using the phone system at the time, but it would be, now it would be app or online so that they become very aware because if they didn't do that, then, you know, as, as happens, if we're not using something regularly, they can forget what they need to do. And, so we were building confidence really in them using the system as well as the clinical staff. Um, if patients had a query, occasionally I got a call, but more often than not they would just ring the clinic and say, look, you know, this has happened or that's happened. And often there could be quickly, uh, could be something that could be quickly sorted. Um, you know, it might be getting the, the pen clicker to, to, to break the finger, maybe having a little problem with that, or sometimes, you know, just various things that have maybe forgotten. Um, but generally, I think if you, you know, have good training system and they've practiced um, and they also get training booklets, so they've got lots of information to take away and read, um, then obviously they can come back to that as well. So, yeah. Um, but, but it's important that they do have somebody, if they are struggling, that they can just have a quick phone call with and often that just sorts the problem. We were keen to get feedback. They, I mean, they gave verbal feedback, but then um, we organised some focus groups and invited um, everybody and we had a really good uptake. We had over half of the cohort came to focus groups to tell us how um, they were enjoying using it, that they didn't want it taken away, they'd got some freedom using the system, uh, they didn't want to go back to the system as it was. Um, they even told us that, you know, initially they had been concerned about the staff and would the staff still have their jobs there. Um, and we, you know, we found that actually the, the clinic staff were still key to that whole patient um, testing, even though they're not doing it directly. Obviously, they are still very much involved in results coming in and dosing. 
patients and also where there are any problems um, so that if people have changed medication, if they've had any bleeding symptoms that they need to report on the system, then obviously that does need a discussion with the clinician before dosing goes ahead. Yeah, I think there was concerns probably that they were going to lose some of that face-to-face -face interaction, which granted face-to-face -face interactions do reduce because of the system, but it did mean that they could spend um, more quality time with those patients who maybe do need extra support or who need to come to clinic. Um, because the initial clinics, um, you know, there could be over 100 patients coming into a clinic, so it used to be a really very quick turnaround. Um, for people coming to clinics, so it actually eased numbers um, considerably for the staff and um, made it more manageable really.